All right, in this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to create your own tolerance testing tool. Um, so have 123D Design open. If you have a sketch already, um, just go up to the menu here and click New. And I'm not going to save this sketch right now. All right, so we're going to start off by rotating to our top and so that we can be looking straight down onto our workspace. Um, and like I mentioned in the, the previous video, 123D Design is really powerful if you start from a 2D sketch and then work your way up to a 3D object. So that's what we're going to do. So first I'm going to drag a rectangle down here. And I'm going to make its length to be 15 and its width to be 55. And then I'm going to hit Enter. Now I'm going to add a circle sketch. And I want its radius to be 4, so I'm just going to type 4. And I'm going to put it close to the edge without overlapping it at the edge. So if I left it here, it would overlap. I don't want that, so I'm going to move it one snap back. All right. And then I'm going to hit Enter to place it. And now I'm going to copy and paste that circle to create another one. So I'm going to make sure that the circle has a green highlight around it. Sometimes you have to move it around. This black highlight is not what I want. I want to have the green highlight. I want to select the entire sketch. So once I click that, you can see it turns this dark blue. I'm going to hit Command C and Command V to paste a new one. And it's going to let me drag it over. I'm going to drag it over about 10 millimeters and then hit Enter to save that. And then I'm just going to hit Command Copy, Command V again, drag it over another 10 millimeters, hit Enter, and again. And one last time. Okay. Now I'm going to create offsets for each one of these circles, and these will actually be what test my tolerance. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit to fill my screen um, because it'll be easier to move around that way. If you have to, click on the pan tool to move your screen around some. And you really want to fill that screen. It's going to help you out a lot. Okay. Um, I'm going to hit escape to get back to my arrow tool. And now I'm going to go up here in the sketch menu and I'm going to find the offset tool, which is all the way over here. I'm going to click that. And when I do, it says click on grid, sketch, or face to start sketching. Okay, so I'm going to find the uh, circle. And again, I'm going to try and get that uh, green highlight. I'm going to click it. And then it wants me to select the curve to offset. So I'm going to select the black line this time. Okay, and then I'm going to drag, and this is going to create basically a, a circle that goes around the uh, outside of my other circle. And our lowest tolerance is going to be 0.4 millimeters. So that's what I'm going to set this offset to be, so 0.4. And that's because that's what the tip of our nozzle on our 3D printers is, it's that 0.4 nozzle. I'm going to repeat the same thing. Okay, so I click the offset tool, I click the circle to edit it, and then I have to click the curve. And this one I'm going to make 0.5 millimeter offset. Hit enter. I'm going to create another offset with the next circle. So I have to select the circle, then select the curve, drag it out a little bit. This one's going to be 0.6. And then we're going to do it again. Select the circle. Select the curve, drag it out. This one will be 0.7. And one last time. This one will be 0.8. All right. So now what I have here is I'll, uh, when I extrude this up, I'll have pins with different gaps between them and the, our solid rectangle. Um, and that will tell me which pins fall out easily or ones that we have a good tolerance for. Um, pins that are stuck in there means that our tolerance is too tight for that. So I'm going to rotate the workspace just a little bit to the side here so that I have this kind of angled look. Okay. And I'm going to click on the rectangle. And when I do that, this little gearbox pops up and it tells me what I can do with that shape. Um, and the option I want is extrude. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to grab this arrow and just drag it up a little bit. I'm going to drag it up to uh, about 10 millimeters will be good. And hit enter. OK, so that actually created a 3D cube out of my rectangle. All right, now I'm going to go down to the bottom view. Well, 
actually I'm going to do the bottom angled view so you should have a view that looks like this I'm going to zoom in again and this time I'm going to try and click uh, select this outer circle and it's going to be a little hard to get uh, so maybe the easiest thing to do would be to go up here under the construct menu find the extrude tool click that okay and then I'm going to go and select the ring or the uh, kind of the space between the inner and the outer circle I'm going to click that and when I do it'll let me extrude this and you see how it turns red what it's doing is it's actually subtracting that area from our uh, cube so I'm going to just drag it up so it goes all the way through and then hit enter I'm going to do the same thing again with the next square or the next circle drag it all the way up and hit enter extrude tool drag it all the way up and hit enter and now I'm going to show you a shortcut for the last two I can use the extrude tool and I can click on the first circle and then I can actually shift hold in the shift key and click on the second circle and I can drag them both up to make them removed okay so now I'm going to make my way back up to the top view or at least this angled and you see how the the pins now uh, you can see the pins um, they have this kind of gap around them and what I'm going to do is I want to pull the pins up a little bit so that I have some uh, an area to kind of press on them to see if they drop out so I'm going to use under the modify tool uh, or the modify menu there is the press pull tool I'm going to click that I'm going to click my first pin and since I showed you the shortcut already I'm just going to go through and I'm going to select each one of my pins okay and I'm going to drag it up about four millimeters it's probably pretty good and hit enter all right and now I'm gonna this is a really cool style thing to do and initially once you learn this you're gonna be wanting to add fillets to everything or fillets um, but uh, use it with control but for now let's have a little fun um, so under the modify menu again we can find the fillet or the fillet tool and click on that and what that's gonna let us do is it's gonna kind of round our edges on our pins so I'm gonna click each one of my pins and I want the top circle you can see how sometimes it'll select the the whole cylinder I just want the top circle to be selected and again to select multiple things you hold in the shift key and you use your left mouse button to click and now that they're all highlighted I'm gonna set my fillet radius to about one I think that looks pretty good you could do 1.5 even but that looks pretty good and now I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom just because it's fun. Um, sometimes it can be hard to oops to get access um, to these pieces down here. So there are still our rectangle and our circular sketches are still down there. We can turn them off by using this uh, eyeball menu on the right hand side and clicking hide sketches. So remember sketches are 2D drawings and solids or meshes are 3D drawings. All right, so I'm just going to grab our fillet tool again from the modify. And some people say fillet, some people say fillet. I, I don't really know which one is the right one. Um, I bet you could Google and find it out, though. So I'm going to click on these circles again. Remember, you got to be careful. Make sure that the green circle is highlighted, not uh, any other part, before you hold in shift and click. Shift and click. All right, and I'm going to set my radius to be 1 again. Maybe 1.5. I like 1.5. I'm going to hit enter. All right, we are almost done. The last thing we want to do is we want to know which pins these are. So I'm going to use the text tool and I'm going to change my view to be the front and find the text tool. And then it's going to say we're going to select the rectangle or the this face of our uh, cube and click it and then we're going to tell it where we want the text to be and this is going to add the text right to the face of this cube for us so we don't have to do the like uh, in Tinkercad where you have to line them up really carefully we can say no just add it to this face so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change my text to be 0.4 I want my rotation to be 0 degrees or my angle and let's change my height to maybe 6 millimeters alright I've got that and now I'm going to select that and I'm just going to paste it 
and hit enter, select that and paste it, hit enter, command C, command V, enter, command C, command V, enter, all right. And now I'm just going to go back and change the text. So if I highlight it, I can the gearbox pops up and I can do edit text. And this one's 0.5. This one is 0.6. This one is 0.7. And this one is 0.8. All right, so right now those are just sketches though, and we actually want them to carve into the face of our object. So I'm gonna select all of them again, and I'm gonna hold in the shift. It's a little bit harder to see what's being selected, um, but you can tell if you've got the right thing because the little gearbox moves. Okay, and now I'm gonna choose extrude text. I'm gonna rotate my workspace a little bit so I can see which way it's extruding. And I'm gonna extrude in Maybe about one millimeter. Oh, it looks like it didn't select all of them, so I'm just going to go back in and do them again. Oops, oops, oops. I'm going to use the undo button there to help us out. All right. And this last one, a 0.8. And I'm hitting enter to save the changes. And one more time, I'm going to do hide sketches. And now I can see that the letters are actually carved out. And this guy is ready for printing. Um, before I do that, I'm going to save it to my library. So I'm going to do save to my projects. And I'll call it tolerance test. You can call it whatever you want. Click save. And then finally, we can do export as 3D, STL, and we'll say OK. And I'm going to call it tolerance test. And now that's ready for 3D printing.